metamorphosis of sea stars. So what is metamorphosis? Metamorphosis is the process in which an animal transforms from its immature form to its adult form. It is a biological process by which an animal physically develops after birth or hatching. It involves a conspicuous and relatively abrupt change in the animal's body structure through cell growth and differentiation. On the basis of the degree of changes, there are five basic types of metamorphosis. The ametabolous development or ametamorphic, the gradual metamorphosis or pyrometabolous development, Third is the incomplete metamorphosis or hemimetabolous development. Fourth is the complete metamorphosis or holometabolous development. And fifth is the hypermetamorphosis or hypermetabolous development. The ametamorphic development undergoes little to no metamorphosis. Here, the youngs emerge from the eggs, resembling the adult in all aspects except in size and sexual structures. It grows only in size by replacing its old skin. Gradual metamorphosis is a type of metamorphosis seen in less primitive forms like cockroaches, grasshoppers, mantis, and white ants. Here, the newly young, which comes out of the egg, closely resembles the adult in general body form, habits, and habitat, but many adult features like wings and reproductive organs are undeveloped and their relative proportions of the body also differ. This type of metamorphosis is called gradual or pyrometabolous development because the young undergoes slow but steady change in each stage until it attains the adult form. Sometimes the gradual metamorphosis or pyrometabolous development is included under hemimetabolous development. In incomplete metamorphosis, only some parts of the animal's body change during metamorphosis. Animals that only partially change their bodies as they mature are called hemimetabolous. From the Greek word hemi or half, meta for change, and the verb bol for to throw, hemimetabolous then is a word meaning half changing. In many insects like dragonflies, mayflies, and damselflies, the different stages of the life cycle resemble to pyrometabolous development, except the nymphs, that are called naiads, which are aquatic and respire by external gills, but the adults are terrestrial. The best example is the mayfly, where adult stage lasts only for a day, but nymphs take one year to grow. Fourth is the complete metamorphosis. This is when a larva completely changes its body plan to become an adult. Organisms that undergo complete metamorphosis are called holometabolous. From the Greek words holo for complete or whole, meta for change, and the noun pole to throw. Holometabolous then means completely changing or wholly changing. Complete metamorphosis development is a kind of rapid morphological change during post-embryonic transformation in some forms of insects where larva has no similarity with the adult and there is always a pupal stage. Some scientists believe that the larval stage of complete metamorphosis may have evolved from insects which hatch from their eggs without developing properly. Some of these embryos may have survived long enough to find food in the outside world and this may have ended up giving them an advantage, as they would be able to feed longer and gain more strength than their peers before metamorphosing into an adult stage. The hypermetamorphosis is a kind of metamorphosis in which there are two or three distinct types of larval instars with different habits and structures found in certain insects. Other species that go through metamorphosis are amphibians. In amphibians, like frogs or toads, their embryos develop into fish-like larvae called tadpoles. These tadpoles have some features similar to bony fishes, features like fins, gills, another are fishes. Bony fishes like tilapia or carp also undergo metamorphosis. The eggs start to develop embryos which hatch as small young fishes or larvae. Each larva bears a yolk sac which is attached to its body. 
This yolk sac provides food to the individual. The provision of food by the yolk sac continues until the larva migrates into the adult stage. While in this stage, the yolk sac disappears because the now adult fish is able to fend for itself. Metamorphosis is commonly observed when little caterpillars turn into beautiful butterflies. Moving forward, this video presentation will focus on the metamorphosis of the sea star. Sea stars are star-shaped echinoderms belonging to the class Asteroidea. They are bethnic animals, which means that they live on the ocean floor, whether it is deep or in shallow waters. Sea stars are commonly called starfish but they aren't actually fish. They lack vertebral column and they don't have fins. Sea stars have no brain and no blood, and there are around 2,000 species of sea stars to date. They actually have five arms, and if one of those are cut off, they can regenerate. Most species of starfish shed their eggs and sperm freely into the water for external fertilization. The fertilized eggs undergo total cleavage and through blastula stage reaches an oval gastrula stage. Initially, the outer cells of the gastrula are ciliated. Gradually, the gastrula elongates and the cilia over the surface of the body become restricted along definite bands. This gastrula is transformed into a larva which in course of time metamorphoses into an adult starfish. The entire process takes about two months from egg to juvenile starfish, depending on water temperatures. After about a year, the newly developed starfish is able to reproduce. During bipinaria, the sea star possesses two ciliated bands, the preoral and the postoral. The preoral ciliated band surrounds the preoral lobe of the larva, which is highly developed. The post-oral ciliated band appears to be longitudinally placed and forms a complete ring between the mouth and the anus. The body of bipinaria larva is extremely bilaterally symmetrical, but subsequently, the internal structures assume asymmetry. It is a free-swimming larva, and the anterior end of the archenterone develops as the mouth and blastophore becomes the anus. The pre-oral and post-oral ciliated bands are continued over a series of prolongations of the body called arms. The name of the arms developing from pre-oral and post-oral ciliated bands are posterior lateral, post-oral, posterior dorsal, anterior dorsal, pre-oral, ventral median, and dorsal median. The pre-oral and ventral median arms develop from the pre-oral ciliated band and the rest of the arms develop from the post-oral ciliated band. The arms are provided with muscles and are contractile in nature. The anterolateral arms are absent. These two ciliated bands are regarded to have arisen from a single ciliated band which becomes subsequently divided. This is evidenced by Asterias rubens and Asterias glacialis where these two ciliated bands remain initially and dorsally connected. In artificially cultured bipinaria larvae, sometimes a single ciliated band is seen, and Asterina gibosa, the typical bipinaria larva, is slightly modified and it moves by the action of the cilia present in the larval organ. In the genus Luidia, the bipinaria larva is peculiar in having a slender long anterior part which terminates into two wide arms. This larval form is named by SARS as Bipinaria asterigera. The Bipinaria is a feeding larva and leads a free-swimming life. After a short period of free-swimming existence, it transforms into a lysithotrophic brachiolaria larva. The Bipinaria stage is followed by the brachiolaria stage in all asteroids. However, Direct evidence is only furnished in the two cases, the Asterius glacialis and the Asterius vulgaris. In astropectin, the brachiolaria stage is absent, and the bipinaria larva metamorphoses directly into adults. The brachiolaria stage is present in Asteroidea, and is regarded as a modified form of bipinaria larva, and it possesses special features, such as three additional arms which are not ciliated in their courses except in Bipinaria papillata. 
These arms are called the brachular arms and are beset with warts to help in temporary adhesion. These arms are devoid of calcareous rods and have prolongations from the silomic cavity. In the sea star juvenile phase, after a month or two, infant starfish starts to resemble small sea stars rather than tiny jelly blobs. The baby sea stars transforms into star-shaped creature at this point. To catch and feed on algae, they begin to grow a variety of tubes, which will eventually become their arms. The juvenile sea star will grow slowly for the next six months until they are large enough to travel in search for food these adolescent starfish prefer to hide under reef rocks and rubbles, away from predators. Adult calcified sea stars are not particularly tasty to most marine animals, but juvenile starfish are occasionally eaten by whales, fish, and even other sea stars. And finally, in the adult phase, adult sea stars forage on shellfish, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and other sea stars on the ocean floor and coral reefs. If a starfish appears to be carefree beauties filling their bellies and producing a slew of babies, it's because they are. With a few natural predators, they can even regrow limbs. Furthermore, some species have the ability to regrow a completely new body from a single severed arm. And that is the process through which a bipinarial larva metamorphoses into an adult sea star. Thank you for watching!